Today I have a Sony TC440 Auto Reverse Reel to Reel tape deck in to have the alignment checked. It was an eBay special. The client that owns it has already replaced the rubber rollers and the belts and done all that work, but wants me to check it out, check the head alignment, check the speed, etc. So we're going to do that for this one. I have a 5 kilohertz test tape here. We're going to check the alignment of the playback head, and then we'll do a test recording and see if we can match the levels, make sure that our output's going to be the same as our input. So first we'll check the alignment of playback. I'm going to open the head cover up here. We'll thread this up and see how my alignment tape plays. Okay, we have power, tape speed, seven and a half. Ooh, I hear an awful lot of wow and flutter on this thing. For a machine with new pinch rollers, that's a lot. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adjusting the phase, or the, to, to adjusting the azimuth here to align the phases up. Now we're going to do the reverse direction. Maximize our levels. So on this deck you've got two, because this, the head rotates around. So it has two stoppers. One stopper on the left side, this is for the reverse direction. And the stopper on the right side, this is for the right direction. This adjusts the, the skew of the head. And then you've got your azimuth adjustments for the head itself. When you're in the forward direction, this is your playback head because the tape is moving this direction. And these are the adjustments that adjust the azimuth for the playback head for both directions. In the reverse direction, this control is actually the record head and you do it in the reverse direction because obviously you need to be able to adjust this head. In the forward direction, those controls are on the back side. So you always do your record adjustments after you're doing the playback adjustments. So I just optimize for maximum playback on my alignment tape, which was made on my Akai that I know is accurate because first it hasn't got a lot of hours on it and two it's never been touched the heads have never been removed on it uh, they are still set from the factory so it should be very very close to being perfect if it is not already perfect okay we're going to record a four kilohertz tone here and uh, see how, how this does Geez, a lot of wild and flutter for this thing, isn't there? But our levels are low. Man, that thing's got a lot of wild, a lot of wild flutter. It okay, will do the one kilohertz. We'll put three dB down. So you can hear the higher I go up in frequency, the more noticeable the wild flutter becomes. Uh, you guys won't hear that. 
That's too high. I hear that one. There's source. Oh, the wild and flutter is horrible on this. Um, client that owns this had the pinch rollers redone. It. Uh, typically, what causes your wow and flutter is a bad pinch roller. You can almost see it here. Take a close look at the rollers. I'll zoom in the camera as it's going. You can almost see the they're not running true. Look at it. You can see the roller here. It's not running true. If you're listening to the wobble, the warble, look at the roller. It's like every time the roller makes one revolution, you're hearing that flutter. And you know that that, that flutter is definitely uh, on the, the pinch roller side because if it was a capstan fault, the flutter would be much higher. Like when you hear the flutter, you can you can see the roller turning, and you can hear the 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 wow every time the roller spins around. So I have to open this thing up. I gotta check my levels. It's actually a playback level because uh, my record tape, my test tape, was recorded at zero dB. And it plays back at zero dB on my own deck. Yet on this one, it's coming in about minus three, which is pretty much where the self-recorded tapes are. If I record at zero dB, it's uh, coming back at minus three. Therefore, I suspect that. The record level is okay. It's a playback level that's off of it. So it's going to check the gain on the playback amplifiers. It's good torque on the belt. A uh, customer that owns this changed all this right she changed the pinch rollers lubricated it all changed the belts this was all done prior to it coming to me so to remove the actual deck assembly we have to take out these long screws which attach the deck to the mechanism or to the cabinet and then it should be able to lift the deck out to work on it and I know I didn't show it but the four feet on the back have to, have to come out as well I thought that would be obvious, but after thinking about it for a minute, I thought, you know what, if I don't show people that, if they think it's just the two that go in the top that hold it in place, it's going to be somebody whining about me not showing. So even though it's obvious, I figured I better tell you guys, if you take one of these things apart, the four screws in the back, I took those out first, and then these ones were holding it in place, so they had to come out. So, so these ones are, I believe these are played by gain, and when I touch the controls, I just touch them. And I can hear, if you listen. And the levels jump all over the place. Hear the noise? We gotta clean those controls. We'll get some contact cleaner in here and clean these controls. So the adjustments on this board as I was showing you guys, these two are the EQ adjustments for left and right channels, which we aren't touching. And I, I mark the controls so that they don't get touched because I did spray some cleaner into them. These are the level controls, and these ones are the meter adjustment controls. So what I'm doing is adjusting, because my tape is recorded at zero dB, 
I adjust the level controls here so that I get 0 dB on the meter for playing back a reference tape. And here's our our output. Yes, our speed's a little off. We'll be adjusting that too, but our output's supposed to be about eight uh, 800 millivolts. So you can see that we're right within the, the range there. It'll fluctuate slightly. This is due to just minor fluctuations in the actual output from the tape because uh, this is an old tape that I'm recording on so there will be some fluctuations but it looks to be pretty good as you can see our, our levels are 0 dB which is what this was recorded at if I drop to the special tape it's going to drop almost almost 3 dB output signal is supposed to drop down to about 600 millivolts so you look over here on the scope we're actually I think about 590 okay yeah I see so we're we're in the ballpark again this is not a special tape this is a regular tape so normally you would have it in normal mode so let's uh my cheat sheet from the service manual for all the adjustments we're going to set this up and we'll do a recording and uh, we'll check our record levels and make sure our record levels are also the same now on playback so now we'll do our record level set up and just clean these controls because these controls are kind of they're dirty so I just sprayed some cleaner into them and we'll just do our record level set up so that our record levels are the same now we'll be calibrated so here's the the right channel okay here's our that's our record signal right at 100% right at 0 dB right there so this is our left channel right at 100% and we go back to playback and then we just adjust our record level themselves that we are right at exactly 100% okay we check our here's our record playback levels here so there's source and tape forward direction and there's our reverse direction for recording complete with all the wonderful wow and flutter and our forward direction for recording okay I'm just setting up to do the speed calibration speed calibration controls are down here on the side and uh, I believe that's in there actually the speed calibration controls down here seven and a half so one closest to the the front three and three quarters in the middle and the one closest to the back is one and seven eighths now to do this I'm recording a four kilohertz tone on my reference machine I know my reference machine is accurate because it's using an AC synchronous motor so any decks that use an AC motor are very very close to always being on perfect speed unless there's something wrong with the motor but I have three machines actually I have four machines five machines that are AC referenced I don't use my Sony's as a rule because they're a rim drive to the capstan flywheel my Akai's and that my TIAC are belt drive so there's no slippage that can happen 
So I've checked the speed of both of my Akai and my TIAC and they're all measuring exactly the right speed. So I'm just recording now on my other deck a 4 kilohertz tone. We'll play it back here. We should have 4 kilohertz. We'll look at it on the scope. 4 kilohertz. Uh, oh, and I play it back at 3 and 3 quarters. It will be 2 kilohertz. And when I drop it to 1 and 7 eighths, it should be 1 kilohertz. And that's how you adjust the speed according to the service manual. This all comes out of the service manual that I've been reading for this. So I'm calibrating this unit as per the factory service manual. I think that control needs to be cleaned. It's jumping all over the place. Let's just spray some cleaner into these controls. That's a little better. Okay, next speed down. That well and flutter is something else, isn't it? And Okay, that pretty much completes the alignment of this unit. Record and play levels have been checked, and the speed has now been checked. Now time to put this thing back. Actually, we're going to do some music recording on it. I want to see how it sounds. So let me just uh, plug it into my MP3 player, and uh, we'll do some recording. I'll just uh, change the tape again and go back to the other tape, and we'll just... Uh... Oh, that's interesting. The motor speed control affects the fast forward and rewind speed. Load up the other tape and we'll do some recording and see how it sounds. Oh, the wild flutter is just driving me crazy. But look at this, you can see it. Look at the springs here. These, uh... I was going to say the name of the guy and I, I edited it out, but there's a, there's, a, there's a guy that rebuilds rubber rollers. I'm not going to say his name, but uh, that's where they were done. But I'm sorry. <laughs> we should not see the rollers dancing like this and hear the music wavering in speed as the rollers dance. I mean, you can see it. Ridiculous. Anyway, it is what it is, right? It uh, came into me to have the alignment done for the heads and have the levels set up and checked out. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, we're just going to check the erase heads. They look to be like they're doing their job, but I'm going to erase what's on here. We should see that here the levels drop off to nothing. Which they are. But it's the wow and flutter that really concerns me on this. Again, watch. See the so the unit's going back together. Now the unit came in with one knob missing. And uh, set our levels down to minimum here. Tape speed selector. And I gotta get this pause lever back in place.
that just goes on like that and there's a set screw that tightens it down. Okay, last but not least, the tape head cover goes on like that. So we'll set up a tape. playback of a different track. I think this thing is, is sounding as good as it's going to sound that uh, wow and flutter is far too high but unfortunately looks like the rollers that were replaced on here weren't manufactured properly as I showed before they are causing a problem anyway thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one real soon bye for now